Hey guys, welcome to the first flip video lesson by Ms. Fisher and Mr. King. As you know, Mr. King is, you can maybe hear grade 12 in the background. Mr. King is not going to be here today. Uh, and Ms. Fisher needs a break from you, so we're going to do a flip video lesson on the Renaissance. So what you should be looking at here on your screen is a modern day map of Italy. This is not the... Uh, this is not the peninsula in divided during the Renaissance, and also a modern day rendition of uh, some streets in Italy as well. Alrighty, everybody, the next slide here is a story of death and decline. Feudalism ends. As you know, for the Renaissance to begin, one of the major things that needs to happen is feudalism needs to die. <laughs> as we learned last quarter, guys, the Black Death or the bubonic plague, as we call, can call it, killed half the population in Europe. If you look on the chart on the right, you can see in the center the decline in the population of Europe and how it slowly recovered as it moves to the right. Okay, and one of the second causes of the end of feudalism would be the uh, the peasants uh, as well as their revolt. So as you know, the peasants and also the nobles as well were unhappy with King John and his spending. So they forced him to create the document, the Magna Carta, which we did study last quarter. Uh, and the Magna Carta limited the king's power, which helps end feudalism. And thirdly, guys, Another end, of feudal, uh, another end to feudalism was the Hundred Years' War, which, as we learned, there was lots of fighting in France, Orleans, Tours, um, Ag Agincourt. I think I messed that one up. <laughs> because of all this fighting going on in France with England, Many of the people needed to go off and fight. Okay, and then the fourth cause, uh, of course, is the Crusades. Uh, the Crusades being the religious wars between the Christians and the Muslims. As you know, during those Crusades, several people died. And along with the death, the Crusaders would go out and they would bring back several stolen or pillaged items that they got uh, during their Crusades. Uh, which began to develop some towns, and those towns would then be centered around different shops where they were selling those items. And when you're thinking of trading, selling, and buying, that would not be feudalism, that would indeed be capitalism. And lastly, guys, the last straw for feudalism is status began to change. People stopped looking at your birth what you were born as, your birthright. It wasn't so important anymore if you were born the son of a lord or a knight son. It was more about your abilities. What are you able to do? Okay, so the fall of the the fall of feudalism obviously needs to bring a rise. So our rise will come in the Renaissance. And if you forgot from your Vocabulary already, Renaissance means rebirth. Uh, this is the rebirth of some of the classics and also looking towards human potential or the things that humans have the ability to do. And with that in mind, guys, scholars became more interested in the education, art, and architecture. And they looked to ancient Greece and Rome for inspiration for guidance. And this is especially important because most of this started in Italian cities, the home of ancient Rome. This happened there mostly because these cities were the wealthiest from trade and people were able to spend that money on art. If you look on the, at the painting on the right, the bottom right, that painting is on the chapel of, well, the Sistine Chapel in Vatican City. You can go visit it today. 
Okay, and one of the third reasons that the Renaissance came, of course, if you remember, the Crusades are happening, and during those Crusades, people are not only going to reclaim the Holy Land, but they are also experiencing cultures of foreign areas that they had never visited before, and people are suddenly gaining an interest in exploring the world outside the walls of their homes. And okay, guys, I have a question for you. What does the Renaissance mean? A, a resurgence of classical learning and human potential. B, a rebirth of classical learning and human potential. C, a rebirth of modern learning and human potential. Or D, the rebirth of classical learning and intelligence. If you chose Anything but B. I'm sorry. If you <laughs> Alright, next question, guys. Why do you think what do you think is the main reason why feudalism declined and why? Is it A, the Black Death killing all the people? Is it B, the people hating on King John and the creating the Magna Carta? Is it C France and England are having a war and killing each other? Is it D? The Crusades, the Christians and the Muslims are killing each other and trading, or is it E, status? It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, whatever, you're all good. The answer is all. As we talked about in class on Tuesday, guys, Italy is no longer united like it was during ancient Roman times. As the Middle Ages occurred, Italy split up into many different kingdoms. You have the Kingdom of Sicily in the south, the Republic of Florence in the north, the Kingdom of Naples in the southeast. You have the Papal States in central Italy around Rome, the Duchy of Milan, the Republic of Genoa, and the Republic of Venice. So next we're going to go into humanism and individualism. So in the feudal era, feudalism, uh, religion was one of the most important things of that time. But once that has ended, the shift has happened and religion is still important, but there are other things which are now equally as important during the Renaissance. And that would include things like education and philosophy. When we look at humanism, it tries to balance religion with the power of the human mind, the study of history, literature, public speaking, and art led to a new way of thinking in Europe in the late 1300s. Individualism, on the other hand, is the belief that each person is important and has worth and potential. This goes along with the changes in how we look at status earlier in the PPT when it was more about your ability rather than your birthright. Time to check if you were listening. Hey, the question is the difference between individualism and humanism is A, humanism, humans are seen as having potential as a whole, an individual, each person has potential. B, in humanism, people study the human form. Individualists concentrate on perspective drawings. C, humanism balances perspective and religion, while individualism is the belief that a person has self-worth. Or D, humanism balances the power of the human mind and religion, while individualism is the belief that each person has self-worth. The answer is probably D. The next thing we're going to look at today, guys, is Renaissance art. But before we do that, we need to talk a bit about medieval art or art in the Middle Ages. If you look at art from that time, pictures were made to look good, but they were flat. They had no dimension to it. Yeah? They lacked perspective. Think about it between a, a cartoon or an animation. Yeah? Cartoons are 2D, like middle-aged paintings. But during the Renaissance, they started to go to 3D. So if you're looking up the top, you should see a very flat-looking picture of Jesus. 
But if you're looking at the bottom, you'll see a very realistic Renaissance painting uh, of a woman where you can even start to see the textures of her hair uh, and skin, uh, which was one of the big things of the Renaissance was putting detail into their paintings. Besides looking at the people, Renaissance artists painted pictures that showed scenes from everyday life that were realistic and included movement and perspective. Things looked three-dimensional, dimensional, as I said earlier, or 3D. And subjects that were closer looked larger and more vibrant than subjects in the background. All right, it's quiz time. The difference between the Renaissance and medieval art is A, in the Renaissance, artists painted more realistic. B, in the medieval period, artists painted more realistic. C, in the Renaissance, artists painted people as more attractive than they actually were. Or is it D, in the Renaissance, artists painted without perspective. It is A, children. What you're looking at here is the real Renaissance art. Uh, so you should be looking at an image of a little girl and a grandpa-esque figure. So this is quite a famous picture. Uh, so you probably have already noticed this man is a little unsightly. He's not very nice looking, uh, which was one of the characteristics of Renaissance art. They did paint in all detail, including all of the ugly detail. He's got quite a large nose. He has some warts. Uh, he's got a blackened skin. Uh, so this was painted by somebody whose name I can't pronounce, which is Gerlandio, something like that. Uh, and he was a very true Renaissance artist. Hey guys, this is an artist who we can actually pronounce his name. This is Michelangelo. <laughs> and he is most famous for his statue of David. This statue is enormous. It stands 13 and a half feet Tall, which would be what? Over two meters tall? Yes, over two meters tall. This statue is so realistic, guys, that you can see the veins in his neck, the, the things that move blood around your body. And you can see it on his arms and his legs. If you don't know, David is on the right here. As I mentioned earlier, guys, we talked about the Sistine Chapel for a minute. Michelangelo made that painting on the Sistine Chapel, and he spent four years painting there. Not only did he paint that painting, but he also painted other scenes from the Bible. You can go see these paintings and the Sistine Chapel in Rome today. On the right here, guys, it's the Gates of Paradise, as Michelangelo called them. It took 22 years to make these bronze doors for the baptistry in Fort Florence. Look at the amazing detail. These were not made by Michelangelo, but these were made by Gaberti instead. <laughs> All right, so while you did not maybe necessarily know who Ghiberti was, we definitely all know who Leonardo da Vinci is. Uh, he is a jack of all trades. He has many different artistic style jobs. He was a painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, as well as an engineer. Uh, he is somebody who liked to explore different forms and use different kinds of uh, paints. Uh, so one of his famous paintings, you probably all remember, is The Last Supper. That painting actually has some extreme detail on it. If you look closely inside, you can see that the paint on, uh, on the walls behind Jesus and all the apostles has actually been peeling as though it were done in real life. Uh, people uh, today still view The Last Supper as one of the most beautiful religious paintings ever made. Uh, another famous painting of his is the Mona Lisa, uh, which you can see in the Louvre. Um, it is one of his most recognizable paintings. In fact, in many languages, although she may have different names, if you say Mona Lisa, most people will remember who that is and who painted her. This lovely lady here is the Mona Lisa. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity, which I have not, and I hope you do at some point in your life to go and see her in the Louvre, uh, she is very, very small. She's only two feet, six inches. Uh, by one foot nine inches approximately, which is actually quite small for a painting. Uh, so when you go there, if you get the opportunity, it'll actually be very hard to even see the details on the painting because it'll be quite far away uh, from the public. 
Interesting fact, Leonardo was a very weird man. In order to learn how to paint more realistically, he actually dissected, and that means actually taking dead bodies opening them up with a knife and playing around with their insides to learn better how to paint more realistically. So there was something a little not right with his mind. Okay guys, I have a question for you. Where did most of these artists live? Where did Michelangelo, Ghiberti, and Da Vinci live? The answer for many of these artists was Florence, Italy, you might ask. Why they lived in Florence? Well, that's because Florence is a port city, and many port cities had families that grew wealthy from the trading in those cities. In Florence, that rich family was the Medici family. This family grew very rich from trading and later banking. They appreciated art so much that they paid artists to work to beautify Florence. Just a little bit more detail about the Medici family. As Mr. Randy said, they were traders, bankers, and patrons of art. They firmly believed that a good artist should receive money for their work. So the Medici family started commissioning art from different artists around Italy. Uh, so they paid people to create art. The Medici's were what we would call patrons of art. It's one of your vocabulary uh, words. And a patron is somebody who will give money in exchange for pieces of art. Again, that's part of a commission. Because the Medici's had incentive, gave artists incentive, which means reason to create art, that is the main reason they moved over to Florence. And because of that, Florence became one of the most important cities of the Renaissance period. Ask yourself, which word best summarizes the Renaissance? A, survival, B, astronomy, C, change, or D, monarchy? Think fast. It's change. <laughs> Quiz yourself, guys. The Sistine Chapel was painted by who? Uh, Titian, Michelangelo, Botticelli, or Raphael? Think fast. It's B, Michelangelo. Quiz yourself. What is one way that da Vinci used science to make his art more realistic? Is it A, he studied and sketched bones and muscles? Is it B, he studied measurements of the earth to make realistic scenes? Is it C, he used a, a microscope and made sketches based on what he observed? Or is it D, he used astronomy, which would be the study of the stars to sketch the sun? Only one of those makes sense, and that would be A. Okay, guys, quiz yourself. What, art, what period is this artwork an example of? A, Renaissance, or B, Medieval? It's A, Renaissance. Why, you ask? Because it's three-dimensional, shows perspective, and is realistic. Lots of art stuff. Quiz yourself. The following artwork is from which period? Is it from the Medieval period, A, or is it from the Renaissance? Take a look at those very, very flat features and the subjects of that painting. The subjects of those paintings are religion and knights. Uh, so of course that should be from the medieval time because it's showing something from feudalism. Quiz yourself, the following artwork is from medieval time or renaissance time. Have a look. It's a very real. Why? Because it is three dimensional, shows perspective and is real. Okay, quiz yourself, guys. This following artwork is an example of which period? A, medieval, or B, renaissance? Hmm, I'm gonna go with A. Why do you ask? The figures are flat and not very realistic. Jackson, this artwork is an example of which period? Is it the renaissance, A, or is it B, medieval? Who's that? Medieval. It is Renaissance. That is a picture, that is a statue of David who was created by Michelangelo, inspired, of course, by Greek statues. So nice. And last one for today, guys. 
Which of the following ideas is not part of humanism? A, Greece and Rome were inspiration. B, the, to only glorify and worship God. C, poetry, history, and public speaking. Or D, talented writers and honor, artists were honored and encouraged. Hmm, B, to only glorify and worship God. No one needs that.